So you want to know how to do a complete UX design process? Well today, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process that you can use and also watch till the end because I'm going to show you some great tips on how you can find the best features for any product. Everyone and welcome to Wallace TV where we share the best tips, advice and strategies about UX design to help you improve your life through creative advice. So, following on from part one, first we define the brand, we define the users, we define the goals, and after we do that, I remember I showed you at the end of the video how to create a customer journey map, and today we're gonna to be focused on feature mapping. This is a primary big, big part of any design project, and feature mapping is a key thing going forward. So what exactly is feature mapping? Well, feature mapping allows you to identify, mark, and measure the best features for the product that you're working on. When it comes on to feature mapping, the first thing I would talk about is you need to know what are the things that you want to do going forward, or in other words, what are the priorities for this project going forward? So there are some key questions that you need to ask when it comes on to mapping features. The first thing you need to know when it comes on to feature mapping is first you need to know what it is exactly that you are building. So are you building an app? Are you building a web app? Are you building a website? Are you building some type of dashboard for a web app or be very specific, be very clear and know what it is that you are building from the offset. The second thing you want to know is what are the best features for the users that we are trying to achieve. So remember in the beginning we spoke about defining the user's needs, right? Once you've defined the user and their needs, then you should be able to know what features will best meet their needs. So as you go forward, focus on the best features. You and your team will come together, you'll do a series of innovation workshops, and then you'll be able to look at what are the best features going forward. But if you are an individual, then you need to look at the needs of the users and just consistently think what would best meet their needs and what features could we use to then allow those users to complete their goals, where, whether it's to sign up, whether it's to purchase an item, whether it's to go to a specific destination. It depends on what the app is trying to achieve, but be very specific about those features based upon the needs of the users. Once you've found out what the best features are, you then need to organize what features will be mostly used by our users. Now, if you come in and you're working on a project that has already been has, that has already started or that has some kind of background to it, you can then use their qualitative analysis, you can then use their quantitative analysis through the users that they have and just look at the information that the company already has and then you can see, ah, based upon the information that we have provided, users use these features the most, right? But if you are working on something from scratch, something from the beginning, then you need to think, based upon the business goals and the user's needs, what would be the primary features that we know users would use the most? And then you map it in order of priority. So you have your best features one, and then you have your most used features in order of priority. So that when you go to begin work, you start with the highest priority and you work your way down. The next question you need to look at is how do our features compare to our competitors? So look at all the competitors within your specific market, right? And see, look at their features. Even if you are trying to replicate or, you know, rebrand or evolve current features that they are using, then you can look at how we can try and disrupt this current market with the features that we are trying to create. This is why user profiles are so, so, so essential. The more you know about your users, the better you will become at finding the features that meet their needs the most. Once you understand the features that you are trying to achieve, then you can now map out what will then cost the most to build and what will take up the most resources. And this is why it's best that you prioritize the features that are the best for the users and that are mostly used by the users. And then it's a better use of money and it's a better use of the resources of that business. Remember, you're not just trying to have a product that is full of features, although it is nice to have a lot of features, right? But the key thing you're trying to focus on is you're trying to meet the business goals and the user's needs at all times. You wanna save the business as much money as possible, but deliver a, such a high value product that the customers will consistently keep coming back, which we call retention. And then at the same time, then the customers will then use what we call as referrals. They will be loyal to you and refer that product onto a friend or an associate because they know it's been good for them. So what's the best tip I can give you when it comes on to mapping features? Well, look at feature mapping across three specific areas. One, obviously the features that you're going to give the customers, right? Two, you want to look at the complexity of those features as well. And three, you want to look at the experience of those features to the specific users that you're trying to meet their needs for, right? So one, 
If you have more features, then by default, it will then increase the complexity of the users when they're trying to use that product, right? And then it will in turn decrease the experience or the value of that experience will decrease as well. So if you decrease the amount of features you have, you can also decrease the complexity and in turn increase the experience because users are primarily coming to your product for that one or two reasons. Now it doesn't mean you can't have more products going forward, but make sure the products you add or make sure the products that you update on that app or that website or that web app that you're trying to create enhance the experience to the user base. You see, the more pleasurable the experience is, is the more likely the users are going to refer it onto somebody else. And the best type of advertisement for any business is word of mouth. It doesn't cost any money and users do all the marketing for you. And the best experience that you can create for your users is the more likely word of mouth will be achieved. The key thing to remember is that smart companies study their users as much as they possibly can and then create the features that users always need. And then as they learn so much more information about their users, they curate the features to meet those needs. And that means that curation is key. Don't let the temptation of adding in all your great ideas let you lose focus of the business goals and the user's needs. So that means that no are the best words that you can use. Fight the features that sound great in the team, but are not the best for the users. So curate, 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 so that you can achieve the business goals and in turn, increase customer retention that will increase the revenue for that business. And they will love you for that as a UX designer. So the question of the day is what tips stood out to you the most? Comment in the section below and become a part of our Wallace TV community. So I would love for you to subscribe, like this video and comment below as I said, and once again, thank you for watching Wallace TV, where you can improve your life through creative advice. Have a great day. Come on, we can do this. All right. Come on, we can do this. Bang. Check, my check, my check.